Welcome to Marlton Assembly of God. We're so glad that you joined us today. Let's enter into a time of worship.
What a wonderful presence of the Lord. Thank you for joining us online this weekend. I have some exciting news. Sunday night, seven o'clock, we're having what's called a drive-in communion and worship night. We want you to join with us. Actually, if you come a little early, between 6.30 and 7, you can kind of greet the pastors under the carport, receive your communion, and then at 7 o'clock, service will begin. So join with us. This is phase one of us coming back in person to church. So again, 6.30, between 6.30 and 7, receive your communion, greet the pastors, and find your parking spot. And right at 7 o'clock, we will have service. We'll have a time of worship, communion, and a short devotional message. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great to see people once again. So I'm gonna pray, pray over the service. Pastor Liz is actually preaching God's word. I wanna say thank you to Pastor Liz and her team for all the resources towards kids and young families in our church. Go on the app and church website, and each week there are resources for children, children's ministry. But let me go to the Lord in prayer. We present to the Lord our service to Him as we continue attribute number four, learning to follow Jesus, learning to evangelize. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our sweet time of worship today. And Lord, now as we get ready to hear your word, I pray our hearts will be open to being used by you and to share our faith and to evangelize. Our world needs hope. We have the gospel, the good news. Help it to go deep into our hearts and to share the message of Christ to anyone who comes in our way. Help us be kind and gentle. Help us to have listening ears so we can present the gospel. Lord, bless Pastor Liz. I pray, God, the words that she uses would encourage our hearts and our lives. And bless the service Sunday night at seven o'clock as we start to assemble and meet back together. Lord, I pray we be encouraged, we be blessed. Lord, we love you, we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we get ready to listen to this week's announcements, why don't you text or invite somebody to watch the service with us? Welcome to Marlton Assembly of God. We are so glad you could join us for our service online. The following announcements will help you and your family get connected to our church this week. Sign-ups for our Zoom small groups, Summer Edition, are now open. These groups will be held on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m., and you can sign up for them at any time by using our website or the Marlton AG app. We can't wait to see you there. You can download our church app today by visiting the App Store, search Marlton AG, and hit the Install button. Our app will give you access to sermon podcasts and help you take notes during services and so much more. Our app also has a growing catalog of our resources for our kids and youth students to continue to grow. Here at Marlton Assembly of God, we want to make giving easy. We have provided multiple easy ways for you to give from any smart device. You can text GIVE MAG to 77977, which will take you right to our giving portal. Another easy way to give is directly through our website, marltonag.org slash give. You can also use our Marlton AG app. Sending a gift takes less than 30 seconds, and you can easily set up reoccurring payments or give a one-time gift. Thank you for your generosity as we continue to build the kingdom together. If you have any questions, please email us at giving at marltonag.org. Finally, we ask that you take a moment to fill out our digital connection card, which can be found inside of the Marlton AG app. We encourage you to write your prayer requests and praise reports so we can pray for you during the week. If you are a first or second time guest, we especially want to welcome you to our church. Please check the appropriate box and fill out as much information as you feel comfortable. That's it for our announcements. We do hope and pray you sense the presence of God during the service. If you would like further information, visit us on our website or on our Marlton AG app. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Every 
today, man. I want to say thank you to Pastor John again, just for the opportunity to share God's word today. And this is not rehearsed this part, but I just want to tell you guys that Pastor John has been doing an amazing job leading us. Being a pastor on the best of days can sometimes be challenging, but man, to do it during a pandemic with such an amazing anointing and being spirit led through all of it, well, that's just called Pastor John. I encourage you this week, shoot him a text or an email. Let him know how much you appreciate him because honestly, he's doing such a great job. So as a church, we've been studying through the book, Learning to Follow Jesus, and it's pretty cool. Our kids, our youth, our adults, our small groups, we're all doing this together. And so I just wanna give you a quick recap of what we've been doing the past several weeks. So week one, Pastor John taught a great word on learning to be with Jesus. Week two, Pastor Jermel reminded us of the importance of learning to listen. And last week, we heard powerful testimonies as Pastor John taught on learning to heal. And today, we're going to look at attribute number four, learn to influence. Man, I love this attribute. I want to read to you out of the Bible, Matthew 5, 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. I entitled this message today, Pass the Salt. How many times have you heard that in your lives over the years and have never even thought about it, never even gave any thought to it? But today, I want to encourage you that we never hear that statement again without being pressed in our hearts for what God has for us. Jesus continues to say in Matthew 13, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You know, we may have read that so many times, but you know, honestly, it's kind of strange. Like, why would Jesus choose salt? Salt isn't even like one of the cool spices, like saffron, right? Come on, saffron. Or how about Sazon. Like, you got to say it like that, though. You can't just be like Sazon. Sazon, you know you want to do it. But salt? Salt is like one of the most inexpensive spices that there is. But actually, when we look in the scriptures, Jesus was making a powerful statement by saying, you are the salt of the earth. When he spoke this, these words, salt was a super important commodity. It was extremely important to the culture in which they were living. I want to encourage you today, God desires to use you in a mighty way as a great influence to those all around you. And today, I want to take a look at three lessons that we can learn from salt. And my prayer is by the end of this service, you and I will truly know that we are the salt of the earth. Well, as we mentioned, salt was super important and a few of the many uses of salt included, it was used as a dis disinfectant. And of course, we know it adds flavor when cooking or in a meal. And at that time, when this was written, there was no refrigeration. So it was needed in order to preserve food. It was used for trading and bartering. And actually, it was even used as money at times. In history, we learned that Roman soldiers would receive pay in salt, or at least partial pay in salt. That's how important it was. In fact, it's been said that the word salary was actually derived from the word salt. Let's not get any ideas from that one. So that gives a little understanding of how important the meaning behind this verse was. So remember, we want to talk about three things today. The first thing we learned that I learned this week was that salt 
was valuable. You are valuable to those around you. You know, that's one of our core values, that we value people. John 6, 1 through 12, I just want to read this story to you in the Bible. Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up to a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he had already known in his mind what he was going to do. So Philip answered him, it would take more than a half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one just to have a bite. Another one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up and he said, hey, here is a boy with, with five small loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down. There were about 5,000 men who were there. Jesus then took the loaves, he gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted, and then he did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, now gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. Man, I love this story because it shows how God uses his great power to enhance what we have. Listen, do you really think that Jesus needed that little boy's lunch? He could have spoken anything into existence. If he spoke an entire world into existence, surely he could have rocked out the first fish sandwich value meal, right? But he chooses to work through people. And you know, the cool thing is that even though he works through people, he doesn't leave us on our own. I love verse five. It says, Jesus said, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Jesus wasn't like, all right, guys, you handle this problem. I'll be over in the boat. Hey, just let me know when you have it all figured out and I'll come back over. No way. Hebrews 13, 5, one of my favorite verses in the Bible says that he will never leave us or abandon us. Remember, God uses his power to enhance what we have. I don't care how you look at it, in what way, in what formula, five loaves of bread plus two fish for over 5,000 people equals not enough. I don't care if you're Italian or not, not enough. But with Jesus, it becomes more than enough. You plus the Holy Spirit equals effectiveness. I love that. Acts 1.8 says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth to Marlton, to Medford, to Mount Laurel, to Cherry Hill, to Voorhees, add your town in there. Or maybe, you know what? We need to make it a little bit more personal. You will be my witness to your family, to your friends, to your coworker, on the sports field, in the grocery store, wherever you are, you are the salt of the earth and you are valuable to those all around you. Oh God, help us to be mighty influencers for you. So the number one thing is salt was valuable. Number two, salt was significant. You know, I looked up the word significant and here's what it said. It said having meaning, importance, or listen to this, great influence. I thought that was really cool since that's the attribute we're learning today. Learn to influence. Matthew 9, 20 through 22 says this, just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. And she said to herself, if only I touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her and said, take heart daughter, your faith has healed you. And the woman was healed at that moment. 
Now here's a woman who had suffered, suffered for 12 long years. She spent all her money on doctors and just kept getting worse. But here's what stands out to me in this story. Listen to this, she was healed by touching what was connected to him. I wanna say that again. She was healed by touching what was connected to him. See, she touched the edge of his garment. Listen, you may be the only connection that people have to Jesus. You know that coworker that you've been working with maybe for two days or maybe for 10 years and you think they aren't close to Jesus at all or maybe your friends, maybe that friend who you've been talking to forever or maybe your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your aunt, uncle, whoever it may be and you feel like, man, they are as far away from Jesus as they could possibly be. I want to encourage you that she was healed by touching what was connected to him. When those folks, when those people that we're talking about, when they're with you, they're actually with Jesus. You know, we learned about this in attribute number one, when we learned to be with Jesus, when we're connected to the vine, man, we're spending time with Jesus every single day. And those that we come in contact with, those that are around us, they get to have an encounter with Jesus because we're connected to the vine. I wanna say that again, she was healed by touching what was connected to him. Listen, you are significant. We are a great influence to those that are around us. Hallelujah. Number three, the third thing that I learned about salt this week was that salt was necessary. You are necessary. When I looked up necessary in the dictionary, an interesting word popped up. The word that came up was essential. Man, we've heard a lot about essential workers lately, and I don't know about you, but I say we are so thankful for all of our essential workers. I'm sure most of us, in one way or another, have been blessed by an essential worker in the past four or five months. I began to think of that word more and more from a biblical perspective, and our world, our family, our friends, our neighbors, they need necessary, they need essential workers who will influence and who will make a difference in their lives. Mark 2 verses 1 through 4 talks about four essential workers. Here's what it says. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. Wow, talk about essential workers. They cared enough to not give up, even when they faced adversity, even when they faced difficulty. There may be times when we're trying to be an influence to those around us, and we may face some adversities, we may face some difficulties, you know, I remember I went to uh, Bible school and then I, I went on to further my education at a, a secular university. And I had been praying before I'd gotten there that God would help me to be salt on this campus, this campus that absolutely needed to hear about Jesus. So it's day one, you know, summer break, we're on day one of a philosophy of education class. And we're sitting in a big auditorium class. There's, there's about 50 plus people, uh, students in this class. And the professor says, he gets up and he's this real like a uh, serious guy and he says, I have a question. So I'm thinking, okay, it's day one. I'm thinking, how's your summer? Did you go to the beach? Do you like hamburgers or hot dogs better? It's day one. Well, he picks up the roster. I kid you not, picks up the roster just like this. And he gets his hand and he goes, um, Miss Nuskazi, why do we exist? what? Uh, day one, I like hamburgers. 
Listen, that's, I was like, are you kidding me? But here's what happened at that time in my life was the first time I had ever experienced this in such a way. The power of the Holy Spirit came on me so strong and I had the opportunity to share the gospel from start to finish with that entire class. Listen, I shared with them who Jesus was, that he died on a cross for them, that he had a plan and a purpose for their lives, that he loved them. I went, I went deep. Let me tell you. And wouldn't it be a great story if I sat here and I told you, yup, and all 50 of them came, weep, came weeping down to the front, giving their hearts to Jesus. Nope. That's not what happened at all. Let me tell you, there was some adversity. There was some difficulty in that classroom. I had people that, um, there, was, there was one kid that, that threw his notebook toward me. Huh, what? Come on. There were people that were literally yelling at me and fighting with, with me and, and trying to get their point across. And, and the professor's just st- sitting there and I'm like, it's day one. But listen, when we pray, when we ask the Lord for opportunity, he will give us an opportunity. But remember this, he does not leave us. He will not leave us nor forsake us, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, amen. Later in this passage, we read that the man was miraculously healed. Without his friends, the paralytic would have been unable to come to Jesus. But you know what? They didn't give up because of some difficulty. They didn't give up because of some adversity. They weren't discouraged. His life was forever changed because they pressed on and they pressed forward. Honestly, not one person that I know of came to Jesus on that day. But all I know is that I was faithful to what God had asked me to do and to step out. And I don't know how he decided to water that seed and whatever happened with that, but he is faithful. He is faithful. You know, I heard the question once asked like this, if Jesus said, I'm going to answer every prayer you prayed last week, listen to this question, would there be anyone new in the kingdom of God tomorrow? I wanna encourage you, I wanna encourage myself, before we talk to our friends about Jesus, be sure to talk to Jesus about your friends. Don't give up. Listen, remember, one of the things that salt does is it melts ice. We know this from in the winter time. We put the salt down and it melts the ice. When Jesus goes before us, Even those people that we might think have the coldest hearts and they're farthest from Jesus, they can be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. The question is today, who has Jesus placed in your life? Who has Jesus placed in my life that we have the privilege of being an essential worker to? Who are you passing the salt to today? Who am I passing the salt to today? You know, in closing, I'd like, to, I'd like you to take a look at this quick video from self-proclaimed atheist, Penn Jillette. And I've always said, you know, that I, I don't respect people who don't proselytize. I don't respect that at all. If you believe that there's a heaven and hell and people could be going to hell or not getting eternal life or whatever, and you think that, uh, well, it's not really worth telling them this because it would make it socially awkward. And atheists who think that people shouldn't proselytize, just leave me alone, keep your religion to yourself. Uh, How much do you have to hate somebody to not proselytize? How much do you have to hate somebody to believe that everlasting life is possible and not tell them that? I mean, if I believed beyond a shadow of a doubt that a truck was coming at you and you didn't believe it, that truck was bearing down on you, there's a certain point where I tackle you. And this is more important than that. And I've always thought that, and I've written about that, and I've thought of it conceptually. Man, that, that is a powerful video from a self-proclaimed atheist. Man, Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says, therefore go, therefore go, 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And I love this. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. More than ever before, this world needs Jesus. In fact, I believe without them even knowing it, they're crying out, please pass the salt. Would somebody please pass the salt? You know, we know from, from experience that salt makes us thirsty. The question today to us is, are we making people thirsty for what we have you know, we're living in a, a very different time right now. There's so much going on. And for us to have peace, man, that, that's, that's something that's unheard of in our world today. Or how about this? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We know those things as the fruit of the Spirit. But as we know, Man, those things aren't on the top norms of people's lives today. In fact, people are, are just searching for a hope. They're searching for something to make sense of all that's going on. We are called to be the salt of the earth, to season the world with the flavor of grace, to bring healing and to lead people to Jesus who is able to help them in every way, who's able to save them, able to forgive them of their sins, to bring them hope and peace and strength and encouragement. Everything they stand in need of is found in Jesus. You know, out of everything, we've studied today about salt and everything I've studied this week, the one pretty obvious thing that stuck out to me is this. Salt does absolutely nothing if it remains in the shaker. We can hope all we want that the salt will season the food, but until we shake it in, until we actually pick up the salt shaker and shake it in, it will never be effective. Who? Today, the question is, will you pass the salt? Again, how many times have we heard that in our lives? How many times have we been asked that just at a whim with, with no meaning behind that? Will you be the salt that this world is longing for that leads them to Jesus? You know, I, we have a few next steps today that, that we're going to talk about. I encourage you to begin praying for those that God has placed around you. Remember, we talked about this before. Before you talk to people about Jesus, talk to Jesus about the people. I pray that every single time you and I see salt in any form, whether it's in a salt shaker, whether we see the trucks in the winter time, whether it's at the store, wherever we are in whatever form we see salt, that we remember what Jesus has called us to do. Today, I want before the Lord to say, Jesus, I want to pass the salt Help me to pass the salt. Help me to not look at my neighbors the same way. Help me to not look at my family the same way. Those people that don't know you, that don't have a relationship with you yet. Oh God, open my eyes to the things that, that they need. Lord God, help me to be the light. Help me to be the salt in their lives. God, help me to add flavor. Help me to add seasoning into their lives. And help me, God, that they would be drawn closer to you because of you that's living within me. Man, that's my prayer today. You know, if you're here today and maybe you, you're saying, I need to kick it up. I, I need to get the salt out of the shaker. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm right there with you. God, I just prayed my prayer. Lord, help me to be more effective as salt in this world. And so I encourage you today to look for opportunities that you can pass the salt to someone this week. When we're praying, God will give us opportunities. I never knew, I never thought on day one of a class 
that God was gonna give me an amazing opportunity to share Jesus Christ with 50 plus students. But you know what? That's the things that happens when we're praying and seeking God. So I encourage you today, look for ways that you can be an influence. As we learn today, attribute number four, learn to be an influence. I will pass the salt, will you? And then lastly, if you're here today and maybe you haven't, you haven't accepted Jesus Christ into your life today. Maybe you're, you're man, I don't get what's going on in this world. I, I, I don't have a hope. I, I don't know what's, what's happening. I want to encourage you that there's a God who loves you so very much and he has an amazing plan and a purpose for your lives. And he's just saying, come unto me, come come I desire to have a relationship with you if that's you today you know today is your day of salvation today is your day of spiritual healing where Jesus can heal our hearts spiritually and we can have a relationship with him if that's you today I just encourage you to say this very simple prayer after me today and and actually you know we do this a lot I encourage everyone to say this prayer if you've already accepted Jesus, man, say this prayer as well. Dear Jesus, I believe in you and I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to be the Lord of my life. If you prayed that prayer today, that's the most amazing decision that you can ever make. And we wanna help you in your journey with Jesus. We have this, this little booklet that's called Learning to Follow Jesus. And we'd love to mail this to you today. If you made that decision, I just encourage you either type something in the chat, I made a decision to follow Jesus, or on your connection card, there's a place that you can just check off. And we'd be so happy to mail this to you this week. And somebody will give you a call call this week just to follow up with you. God bless you. Thank you so much again for the opportunity to share with you. As we close, I just want to pray this blessing over you from number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God bless you this week.